Hello, and welcome to the Point in Progress podcast, episode 32, your one-stop shop for news, recommendations, and some spicy takes. Join five friends across three time zones in two countries every week as we discuss all things that we love while still thinking critically about them. This week, I am your host, Mar Rivera. Very, very excited to get the proceedings going. Of course, I have your lovely bevy of beauties here, of course, here at Point in Progress <laughs> that I'm very excited to talk to, uh, starting with, of course, uh, the man who seems perplexed. Uh, Frank, how you doing, buddy? I'm just looking at Harv doing the fucking monster mash over there. What is going on? <laughs> he's a bevy of beauties. He's doing all his things. He's living his grace. So... Uh, <laughs> It's been, a rough week, doing, guys. it's been a rough week. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It has I'm doing been a rough week. I'm doing pretty good. I'm that's doing good. pretty good. All right, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're looking good. You're looking fresh. Mm-hmm. I like your haircut. The one that you got Thank last you. week. You look some salad. So, yeah. Sly, what 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 is your week been? Um, I'm just offended that we talked about my haircut and you didn't compliment mine. But I haven't gotten there yet. I was letting you speak first, then I would go ahead and compliment your (laughs) wonderful haircut. Okay. okay, Oh yeah. Um, What's funny is I didn't even get a haircut. My hair just grew. (laughs) (laughs) I remember from last week. I want to call all y'all out because I made a really funny tweet and nobody acknowledged it. Oh no. Um, I made a tweet this week that was like something along the lines of like, yeah, like I'm doing really great actually. Like I'm having a great day. And then in parentheses, it was like AO3 search history. And it was like <laughs> hurt, no comfort, major character death, and a wump. Oh, no. <laughs> and I sent uh, this what? to a group chat and <laughs> my friend Kirsten was like, I don't believe you. I can excuse the major character death and the wump, but the hurt, no comfort is where I draw the line. You're not okay. Hmm, I'm wondering. I don't want to know where that major character death is. We'll talk about that after the show. Yeah. I I, uh, I'll, I'll talk, no, I'll talk about it when I get to what I've been watching. Oh, no. Okay. I, if it's a spoiler, leave it. I would leave it out. But if it's no, not. No, no, it's not a spoiler. Got it. If anything, also, fantastic haircut. Uh, Thank you. See? Also, thank you to uh, Loki Mike for the follow. Really appreciate it, man. Love you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being there and, and keeping us and helping us grow and keep this thing going. So thank you again so much. Uh, Harv, I'm how are sorry. you? Been? I was just really thrown off by Mario going like this. What? I... <laughs> you like helping us grow. Helping but us you, grow. Were, you were doing the boob grab. <laughs> my week has been, uh, my week's been <laughs> just. Uh... <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Harv. <laughs> My week's, uh, it's been a lot of work, um, but I got the tail end of the week has been good. We got the Elden Ring stuff yesterday. Um, I am back into video mode again for next week, so I took a week off of just, like, doing anything, like, video-based or anything like that, so we're back at it again this weekend. Okay. Well, that's, that sounds good. So keeping everything productive and busy, which is always a good thing. Um, of course, if you notice, we're missing somebody. Fiona is not here. We are a four uh, square quadrant going on right now. Fiona is very busy, aka Fee, because everyone makes fun of me when I call her Fiona. Uh, she Fee, got, guys, let, let's be. She, she says she's an extra. She got bit by a snake. She okay? got bit. Oh yeah, no, she got <laughs> that's like. Why she is sick. And then she, she technically is. is that's hilarious. People. She got bit by a snake, and then when she went to the hospital for the anti venom, she got bit by a scorpion right afterward. It was my insane. God, my God. I, I, yeah. I, I, well, I didn't even think there was scorpions. <laughs> I didn't think there was scorpions in Nova Scotia, but. Here we are. Well, I mean, they got lobsters. <laughs> they got to have scorpions twice. Right? Right. Well, to combat that, well, the reason why she was bit by a snake because she's hanging out with a group of people that are constantly being bit by snakes over there. Kind of funny. Uh, with a little bit of housekeeping, uh, shout out to uh, Fiona who is, of course, helping out with the extra life. Extra life is happening this weekend, of course, on Saturday, uh, November six, uh, where they will be obviously existing with kind of funny in their groups of playing video games throughout the day which i'm very excited because they're playing metal gear solid 4 for like several hours i'm very very happy about that um and uh, so shout out to them for uh, putting so much effort into helping kind of funny and obviously getting the big beautiful kids the money for the uh, extra life charity so thank you shout out to them for uh doing all that so that's why they're not here today um, I also want to give a shout out to our friends at 61 Indie, which of course launched uh, year two of their brand. 
uh, with a new logo and some projects coming up. So give a great shout out to uh, Mike, Kelsey, uh, and everyone else that is associated. There's actually a huge group of people that are behind that. So want to mm. give them uh, the much love as possible. Um, I saw that you yeah. started to list off people and then go, I'm going to forget somebody and quickly yeah. abort it. That's right. So I'm just talking to the person that was in the video. <laughs> so um, Mike's on the thumbnail. We got Mike and other people. <laughs> and other people. I can name like 10, 10 people maybe from there, but I'm just like, I'm uh, just not going to do it. Just won't do it. Uh, speaking of naming See, other people. I was going to cheat and go off of the the private Discord. Nope, nope. That, not even worth it. Not even worth cheating. <laughs> nope. Of course, entering also year two uh, and doing a rebrand, shared screens, formerly of Waypoint. They've uh, been friends with us a little bit as well. So shout out to them. And also, I just saw that uh, the Geeky site is also entering year three. So all of us are starting to get our anniversaries over uh, becoming things over the pandemic. So I'm actually very happy about seeing everybody weird. thrive. It is very weird. <laughs> really? We all didn't exist a couple of years ago. And now yeah, here we are. Nobody, uh, everyone here just just was born from the pandemic. That's right. I like, how, I like how we were like uh, conceived like <laughs> last week, but did not launch for like four months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's yeah. having their anniversaries and we were like, we were an idea. Yeah. We were, yeah. We were us, a but we, we, were, we were a concept. We were just I mean, we, we, we planned it out. We planned it out pretty well. Yeah. I'm really happy with how we launched, but it yeah. just yeah. cracks me up. I love that we launched basically on on Valentine's Day, and I think that's uh, a really cute little fun feature about us. So once we get to year two, or we talk about year two, that's when we you all talk about our little anniversary, um, which I really hope is uh, <laughs> Third Base Club, uh, the sequel. Um, oh, for sure. More raunchy that's this a time. So very, very hopefully for that. And the last point of housekeeping, of course, uh, Sly launched a new show, 15 and 15. I was in the first episode. Mm-hmm. So much fun. I hope you all got a chance to watch that this week and yes. with Kyle, actually. Kyle. Also, oh, also yeah. a 6 1 indie yeah. person. Kyle, um, really cool people. Yeah. Trophy room. Um, and of course, uh, where I gushed about Frank in my episode and he didn't watch it. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been, I've been busy. I started a new job, so I've been a little bit busy this week. <laughs> That's right. You have been. Yeah. So congratulations yeah. on that as well. Um, but also we, uh, we lost a trailer and first episode of finally the thing that we've been hinting at for a couple weeks. MC University, Marvel Cinematic University, Marvel Slicing University, whatever you want to call it. It is, of course, our Marvel-centric podcast where we get to revisit older Marvel films that are kind of canon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Canon adjacent. Canon adjacent, which is cool. Um, So I'm excited to uh, go on this journey with Sly and sort of do a what we call it Stanley seminar and go through and explaining and discussing all of these films. Um, obviously we're excited for the first episode, which we pre-recorded a couple episodes are pre-recorded. So, uh, we'll see what we'll, I'm excited to talk about the fact that the response has been awesome. Um, some people have talked about it. So many comments, which I'm very excited about. I'm excited for just participation for people watching the show along with us. So mm-hmm. that's what's so great about it. And we try to make it also as digestible as like, this is a, an hour commitment less than that. So that way it just, you know, you get to enjoy the show with us. There's a pop quiz element. There's even interactive stuff like a music playlist that we're going to maintain and keep developing as we go along the movies. So definitely keep here at Point in Progress and at, you know, when we eventually launch the separate podcast feed, MC University. Definitely check it out there. But the first episode, Blade, is out. And season two or episode two, uh, for the homework, of course, is X-Men uh, to the 2000 film. So please, if you want to hear uh, me talk about David Hater a lot, I do talk about David Hater quite a bit in that episode. So fans. <laughs> very. I just want to say it's been so much fun mario and i are having an absolute blast recording this show and i'm just so excited for you all to be able to experience it it's it's just a good time we're having so much fun doing it and i really hope you all enjoy it absolutely absolutely so very excited again thank everyone for the response and that has basically been all the housekeeping and I think we're ready to finally move on to the first segment, which, of course, is our checkpoint, our main place where we're going to talk about what we've been playing. And uh, the person that I want to hear from is uh, Frank. Frank, I, you've been you've been doing the Red Deads and the Dead by Daylights and the Near Raid. Mm-hmm. I saw the Near Raid you guys were doing earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been playing Red Dead a lot. Oh, um, honestly, uh, so I, I, I jumped into Red Dead. And I I jumped in knowing that my first playthrough, because this is technically the first, second playthrough that I've had, 
right of this game because i've played it on pc before but i've more just like jumped in fucked around not really done anything so this time i'm actually through the story going through everything again it's been about two years since i think i've played red dead i can't remember the when even red dead even came out on the ps4 i played it when it came out on the ps4 went through the game bought it on pc barely touched it now i'm actually kind of going through the game and everything and i'm having a blast i've I've discovered that the first person mode in that game is absolutely phenomenal. It feels like a totally 100% different game. It feels like, like I kind of, honestly, the best way to describe it. And it's sad. Cause like, you know, people are going to meme on that, but like, uh, it's like, it's like fucking Skyrim, but the old West, it's just, you get to, you get to see the world in a very different lens as to how it looks in third person. Which is why, like, I, I always think about this argument with, like, Cyberpunk, for example, where people really wanted that game to be third person. But the way you perceive a world, a, especially a big open world, is a lot different in third person than you perceive it in first person. Um, a lot of the towns in Red Dead, to me at least, feel very small in comparison to your character, uh, be, uh, just because, you know, it, they are small towns. But when you put it in a first person perspective, they feel like big, bustling cities. And you see a lot more detail in the way characters act, the way characters talk to each other, um, stuff like even smoke effects, the way your character like leaves boot prints on the ground. You see a lot more in the world and even like gun animations, like your character reloading. You see like the little bullets in their hand as they're putting bullets into the revolver, stuff like that. It's amazing the amount of detail that was put into the the first person perspective of Red Dead Redemption 2 is in comparison to something like if you've ever done first person in GTA 5, it's there, but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily feel like it, it was something that was built from the ground up to be there. It was definitely an addition from when they moved 360 to Xbox One um, or PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. Um, but in Red Dead, it feels like it was meant to be there from day one. It feels like it was meant to be there from day one. All the animations look great. Everything just looks good. The way the game works is totally different when you're in first person. So it, it's it's I'm having a lot of fun just kind of rediscovering this world story through that different lens. Um, if you've ever played Red Dead Redemption 2 and just like, hey, I don't really feel like going through that full game because it is a slog at the beginning. Uh, I would definitely suggest going back and just turn on first person mode and try it out. If you're a fan of like Fallout, Skyrim or Cyberpunk, you're definitely going to find a home there with Red Dead Redemption 2's like first person mode. Um, and then, of course, we've been playing Red, we, Red Dead. We've been playing Dead by Daylight. Um, I've been playing with V. I've been playing with uh, Reagan, a friend of ours, Horror Stones, uh, Chase, Fuzzy Naval. And uh, some other people, such as uh, Bossy Witch, and uh, I'm trying to remember Flip Flam, Flip I, I played, Flip Flam, uh, 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 Pancakes, and Mario. Yeah, um, <laughs> we've been playing it a lot of that game. That we've come full circle on people playing Dead by Daylight, which was one half of the inspiration for our name. <laughs> Yeah, um, point and pro fun fact there, actually, it's a good thing you brought that up. Uh, point in progress, the whole pip idea came from us pipping in, in Dead by Daylight, because that's, that's how you would know that you're progressing in terms of leveling. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've been having a blast with that game. I feel like uh, I have a blast, but then again, that's just me getting better at the game and getting used to all. I, if anybody doesn't know here, at least in the uh, in the Twitch sphere, we I typically don't play that game unless it's like Halloween around October, November. After November, I kind of drop off of it. So there is about a year's worth of changes that happen every year. And coming back to that game is crazy because I do not know what's changed and how the killers have changed and the new metas and stuff like that. So it keeps it a little interesting. But at the same time, I feel like they've really kind of nerfed Survivor pretty hard. But that's really kind of the extent I have to say about that game. It's Dead by Daylight. It's a it's a simple just four four v one game at the end of the day. And then um, the thing I really want to talk about because I know Mario will absolutely probably like this a lot is the near raid in Final Fantasy fourteen. So me, Harv, Mako, uh, and Cheesy Man Dan, if he's ever in the chat, um, decided to just jump into the near raid because we've hit the the level that you're supposed to be at and the because do you have to complete Shadowbringers to even get that raid or okay yeah so you have to complete Shadowbringers to get that so now that we have Shadowbringers story kind of completed uh, we can actually start it and um, I went in thinking 
because I I've played I've played near Auto, near Automata. I've played through the whole thing. I've gotten all the endings. I hundred percented that game. Um, I've gotten ending E, which if you know if you've ever played a near game, ending E usually asks you, hey, or at least this game's end asks you, hey, um, do you want to delete all your save like everything? And I said yes because I'm a fucking sucker for the ending of that game. Harv, you. I'm gonna. I can't wait to play it. I can't um, wait to play it. There's a very good reason why you would want to delete your save in this game. Um, unlike the other near, I think the other near is just like there's like a story reason, but like there's like a, a, a there's not really a. I don't think the reason in the first game is very good, but the one in near will make you kind of question your, your humanity a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, I love that game. I love its ending. I love how ambiguous the ending is. But uh, Yoko Taro, being the absolute mad lad he is, decided that this raid is canon to the ending of Nier Automata. And that's Boy. absolutely bonkers to me that they found, they did really, they honestly found a way to continue the story of Nier Automata's end, bring it into Final Fantasy, and then bring it back and have it make total sense of why they were even there in the first place. If you, if you finish Nier Automata and paid attention to the story, everything kind of makes sense once you kind of get there and to contribute that to sly in some way uh because we've both watched eternals at this point that it's very similar to the plot of eternals which is very bizarre and then we'll talk no. about that a little bit later but yeah it's near yeah. automata is huh. up there it's awesome yeah near automata near automata is that weird game that everybody kind of dismisses because it just has a big butt anime girl and that's like it's it's a it's a fun little like uh, novelty at the beginning but it's not really the point of the game and people kind of dismiss it just because it has sexual appeal to it, and that kind of that, that's another rant for another day. So sexual appeal, uh, sexual appeal does not kill a game. That's my that's my small little TED TED talk. People do not think uh, people should be sexy in video games anymore. I don't want people looking like me. Look at me. I'm a fucking schlub. Do you think I want people to look at me in a video game? <laughs> Come on. I want people to look hot. I want hot Squidward for my character or big booty Judy for my. <laughs> there okay i don't give a fuck i don't get, uh, i don't want people to look like me come on i go to I look at games to look at hot people i go to games to look at hot people not look at people who look like me but anyway that's my ted talk um yeah the near autumn i want more casual butts i want yeah. of all genders i want yeah. more butts than video games not more, more, sexual i mean more juicy like butts for everybody top. Yeah, just, the, just more butt. It's just a two B just has a really good butt. If you want to yeah. reveal that butt, you have to press a button. So anybody yeah. who complained about two uh, B having a nice butt, I'm sorry, you're the one who looked up sure, her skirt, look and it. two, you're the one who blew up her fucking outfits. Look at that butt. You know, you know so who, I don't want to hear you fucking complaining. You know who also has a good butt? Middle Gear Solid. Who? Snake? Oh, Snake? Snake? Is, yeah. If Snake, Snake can have a good yeah. butt, let let two B have a good butt. Rated? I'll look at Snake's butt. Dude, Snake, dude, I'm as straight Snake as a fucking has a arrow. Great butt. I'm as straight as an arrow as it comes, but snake makes me question, makes you question a lot of things. You look at snake's butt. That man looks like he's 60 years old. He's got the butt of a goddamn Adonis. <laughs> okay. He's got the, he's got a butt. I mean, sculpted he, like it he's, looked out of marble. He's, he's always in self mode. So he's got to be crouching. He's doing those. He's doing the squat. <laughs> oh, he, he, bro. I got to find this clip. Is nothing. That man is nothing but squat. But anyway, yeah. Near automata raid insanely good i don't want to spoil what happens in it just in case mario wants to go watch a video of it at least if you're not going to play final fantasy 14 to get the get the kind of epilogue epilogue of uh near automata then go ahead and just watch a video on it. it it'll basically kind of red pill you in to figure out what the hell's going on um but yeah it was the music absolutely stunning the the I fights absolutely fun um I love that it's a big raid with a lot of people. Uh, the music ramps up the more and more you kind of go through the raids and everything like that. The boss is in there. It's basically kind of like a near near story altogether, but like in in subsequent order with an actual ending to it, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, go, I would say go play that. Um, Yoko Taro and the team at Final Fantasy fourteen put absolutely too much effort into it. I don't say that often, but it's. It's one of those weird things where, like, this is free content. Like, this is, are you, this is really free. Technically, I mean, you pay for a subscription every month, so I wouldn't necessarily say free. But it was a uh, free content drop that you know, as long as you had Shadowbringers, you didn't have to pay extra for. Guys, but, he's uh, here. He's, he's here right now. 
how 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 is the snake bite and how is the scorpion sting fee? Are you yeah. doing well? How are you doing? Everything okay? No. And then don't forget that after they treated her for the scorpion sting, she slipped and fell on a lobster. <laughs> they they missed they missed missed uh they they thought it was a, st- a scorpion, but really it was just a lobster. <laughs> it, was just, it was just Larry the fucking lobster. lobster. Are they in the voice? Show? Oh, they're there. Okay, got it. Yeah. We, well, so, if, you, if, you, if you hang out with kind of funny, you get bit by a snake. It's just that's just what happens. It happens all the time on that show. It's ridiculous. Okay, yeah. If our thumbnail can get some butts, uh, solid snake <laughs> to be. Um, I'll think of some other characters that have really nice butts, and we'll we'll work this out. We'll work this out. But uh, yeah, that's been my gaming week. I I sorry to talk for so long, but man, I, I was really excited for uh, all three of these games this week. <laughs> and butts. And butts. And butts. Yeah, video I'm games sorry, need more we butts. Left for one episode, and we already go off the rails. <laughs> booty, butts, booty, booty, booty. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I've had this butt rant before. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I remember us trying to have a butt rant and Fee shutting it down real quick. All right. Well, there you go. We know who, who, who's the butt. Uh, hey, get, get, the, get, the, get the apology thumbnail ready. <laughs> 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 what can we say? This podcast needs more butts. Uh, well, yeah. that's fantastic, yeah. uh, Frank. I'm very happy that you've gotten to experience the near raid because I will not. And uh, but I'm a huge fan of Nier, and you are enticing me to watch a video of at least the ending or at least the cutscene. So, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a picture of me to be and Nine S just kind of chilling out. You know, what cool, I mean? cool. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. And I love that I know the the knowledge of Nier to kind of put it together what it could be. So I yeah, that's it, cool. it it makes sense if you paid attention to like that. And I think there's some. I'm pretty sure. And if I'm not, I haven't played Dragon Guard, but I know there's some like uh timeline stuff in there maybe sure so like that might play a role into it but yeah the it's yeah. it's it, it all kind of it, blends together eventually i'm gonna start revan too is which i have a copy of and i've not started yet and i kind of want to get yeah. back in that world because the music is fantastic okay well uh next up though i'm gonna go over to harvika slide a lot of the things that we got to talk about we're, we have to talk together so we're gonna talk about oh, that yeah. probably last so harv can you go ahead and let, i want to talk about you specifically okay Okay, so I started this show last week. It's the mm-hmm. Netflix Netflix original. It started on Lifetime apparently, and they yes, came it came over to very fucking weird, <laughs> very weird. Um, They're in some freaky shit on Lifetime. I don't know. My mom has a subscription. <laughs> Dude, I, this 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 show is messed up. There's some psychopaths on this on the show. Um, I have gone. Th- I'm a third season. I'm halfway through the third season now. Okay. And. Um, the more this show goes, the less I like it, mainly because I feel like they're adding if I okay, season two I did not like that much. I, I thought season two was short was, was not great. Season three is kind of like a little bit more my style, mainly because I love the suburbs thing, and I'm a huge, huge Desperate Housewives fan. Huge fan of that show. <laughs> Alright. So this is like this is this is this is my shit. This is my shit. <laughs> but <laughs> there, there, there is. I, I, it feels like the shtick that this show is trying to do. So this, this guy is like he's he's got some mommy issues, and he is turned into pretty much a to sociopath. Say least. This, yeah, pretty much a sociopath <laughs> at this point. Yeah, Where like he, most people he becomes very obsessed with women, thinking like he loves them after he sees them once. And then he becomes obsessed, and then it, like it's all consuming, and then and of course by he you mean Dan from <laughs> Gossip Girl. Sure, I've never seen Gossip Girl, so that's yeah. He's got mommy issues, daddy issues, girlfriend issues, neighbor issues, every issue with the book. Sounds like um, someone has not left this high school phase at all. Just stood there, just like in love with everyone. Well, I don't think he because like, he, he he like he wasn't he's in a lot he was in a lot of like foster homes and stuff like yeah, that. Okay, so he was in the system and that that kind of type thing. But the more we get away from what the first season was, was what was us like introducing this with him, and then him obsessing over this one girl, and just kind of building this world, it was so intriguing. So, so it was done so well, and now it's just progressively just getting more like, okay, yeah, he's gonna do it again. Yeah, he's gonna do it again. Yeah, he's gonna do it again. We're gonna kill him again. Show- well, there, there it is, right. <laughs> But like, so I don't know where this show can go in like season four because season four has already been uh, greenlit. So I don't know where they're gonna go. I don't know how the season ends. But the main reason why I'm sticking with this season right now is 
mainly because uh, it's the Desperate Housewives kind of look. You know, you got the sure. suburbs. You got some. You got a lot of white picket fence. A lot of a lot of rich white people are on this on this fucking uh, street. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, they they. Um, I don't know. I. I like the show, but it is getting a little tiresome after a little while. And now Fee is also reading the book because it's based off a book. And apparently the show was like nothing like the book. So I am very That's confused on why, why they went that direction. When you have source material. Like you literally have source material. Yeah, it's it's an age old argument. It's just like we want to try something new, but it's like the people who are trying something new don't really understand why the people who wrote the book wrote it like that way in the first place. So they just try to have their own kind of headcanon. It sometimes doesn't work out very well. It's me. So I'm, I've turned a total corner on this where I was like, oh, I really want to see the adaptions, how they are in the book. But to me, I'm like, the book already exists. And I have that forever. So if I want to see a new interpretation of something, then I'm all about it. Like the fact that Dune can exist in like three different formats and then be totally different interpretations of it. I think that's co- kind of cool. Like when it comes to like shows like this, yeah, they have source material that they could pluck from. But I do like that. It's just like I don't have to compare it. It could just be its own thing. Like Lock and Key is another thing. Season two is out and it's supposedly nothing like majority of the books that I love. But it can exist for other people in a different way. No, it can. No, I, I, I agree. It can. I think it's checking general while we're recording. <laughs> I, 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 I can see it. I can see it. It's just like, it's weird taking that much of a... Because like, what what he is saying is like, season one is the book. Season two, the start of veering off. Season three, he's not even supposed to be... Weird. Like, in season three, he's in San Francisco area. He's in North, North Cal. Sure. In the book, he's in Washington State, running away from a character that he's like married. Like, like it, it just doesn't make any sense. Is like that. That is a huge deviation from where where they've gone, right? That's a huge deviation. But again, mm-hmm. like, yeah, the books are always there. This is what I always say about, like, uh, you know, like the Harry Potter stuff. Like, movies were good, right? The Lord of the Rings the movies were good. Game of Thrones, where people are reading the books. You don't need to watch the show. The the books are there for you, right? Yeah, yeah. But I feel I feel like uh, it usually works out very well when it's a comic book for that for that thing. Like, uh, you know, different interpretations. You you're it. Comic books already have that, right? With books, it's a little bit harder because it's really just one person's interpretation of it that you're kind of following. And I know a lot of people usually get disappointed at that. Cause it's like, you only re- usually, usually not saying always, but usually you only get one shot at, of a live action. And when you're doing a live action, people kind of want it to be a live action version of what they read. So they can kind of, they, everybody has an idea of what they see when they read, but this is the chance that you get to actually see that on screen. And when it's not the same exact thing, I can understand when people kind of get a little bit mad, at least in the book sense. Comic books are a little bit different because you can interpret a comic book 500 different ways. But like, you know, a written story is a little bit different because it are, it already has the, the groundwork there. You just have to put it into screenplay. Sure. But there are definitely grand examples of, hey, they went the total opposite direction and it's a way better product for it. Prime but example. That depends. Well, I was going to say. On the- on the writers yeah. the, that all depends no. on the writers. well the right? stephen king is the one i'm going yeah. is what i'm saying oh, is yeah. where the shining the movie he hates because it's yeah. barely nothing like the movie or the book that he wrote he then shot his own version of it and it's terrible <laughs> and it's well, a direct yeah, copy yeah, but, of the book yeah. so that that's but, where and again but you have to also stephen king isn't a director right like he, no, he doesn't know how to make these kind of movies and right? stephen no, king's not. also on like a massive amounts of cocaine like i was gonna bring that up i was yeah. gonna bring that up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah only only a person that's high on cocaine can think of like blood being all over the fucking hallway coming out of the uh, elevator that wasn't his idea kind of that was, wasn't his idea. That was Stephen Cooper, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, yeah, I believe that wasn't even in well, the book. Well, Stanley Kubrick, you know what? I, I stand corrected. Stanley Kubrick's a fucking <laughs> I crazy stand guy Stanley too. Kubrick. It's kind of like how Halloween, I think Halloween is like an LSD fever dream from fucking John Carp- Carpenter as well. Like, see, I think he was just doing Hard. hardcore drugs on that one. <laughs> Tell me about Elden Ring. <laughs> oh, not yet. Elder, yeah, Elder Ring will be, be later. We're, we're gonna yeah. talk. About, we're gonna talk about Elder Ring, but I one thing I will say about Elder Ring is that I'm excited that we finally got a Don't gameplay. Put it in the notes. In the it's on the, back, it's on the it's on the notes. It's at the very end. I don't think it's yeah. by my name though, right? I don't think so. I, I might have wrote it by accident. My bad. If that's oh, the okay. case. Well, you I was, um, will you point out that you made a video. You made a video. I made about a video. Yes. It. Yeah. Yeah. I made a video. I made a reaction video for the trailer that uh, came out. I went like social media dark. Like I went dark on social media for the entire day of yesterday. So I didn't get spoiled for this. And fun fact, it was number there was number one trending on all of YouTube. This video, which is insane, 
insane yeah. to think about. So um, I watched it last night. I, oh my god, I've, I, I love I TLDR. I fucking loved it, and I can't wait for this game. Yeah. But yeah, the video is up on uh, youtubecom slash Beard and the Hair Gaming. It's there. Uh, I'll be reacting to the entire thing. How many and people? That is fourteen. I think that's all I've been playing. Yeah. <clears throat> How many people do you think Elden Ring is going to bring in because of George R. R. Martin? None. None. You don't think any of the Martin fans are going to be like, I need to play this game, even though they weren't like Dark Souls fans before. They they are really not looking at the Martin side of it. It looks like because even uh, during the trailer, they had nothing to say about the world building or anything like that. Interesting. Like, but we'll get, we'll, let's put a pin in that. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Then. Yeah, we'll yeah. definitely talk about that. Later. Thank you so much, Hart, for giving us your insights into you. <laughs> into let's, you. Let's know about you. It's Harv. Uh, speaking of insights and new things coming out, uh, Sly, what have you been up to? You've actually done some cool things. I had a week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So on Tuesday, I drove up to Seattle for the day and attended an advanced screening of Eternals. It was hosted by Deaf Night Out, which is a Seattle organization that does a bunch of deaf meetups in Seattle, which is really awesome. Uh, I had an absolute blast. It was so much fun. I got to meet so many deaf folks. It was just a great environment. There were so many cute kids running around. I I love deaf kids. They're my favorite. Like you think hearing kids are like like direct and just speak to their mind. Add deaf blunt on top of that, and you get the funniest kids you'll ever meet. Uh, so that was a blast. I watched Eternals. And then nobody else I knew had seen it, so I had to stew on it for two days, just thinking about everything and not being able to say anything about it. And then Thursday, actually yesterday night, I I had a ticket for opening night already, so I just kept that, went and saw it again. Wow. Wow. Everybody, go see Eternals. Um, I have a, like, brief thread on my Twitter about, like, my thoughts about it. Uh, No, like... uh, like major no plot spoilers. points or no. characters. If you want to go in completely blind with no <laughs> opinions, don't look at it. But it, there's no spoilers on it for sure. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it, it was a fun time. Um, yeah, I, I've, yeah, I've I've, I've been like you. I've been hearing like mixed things about this movie for some reason. Yeah, compared like like when when it comes to the MCU movies, like some people say it's fine, some people say it's good. So like it's it's. It, that's kind of where I'm. It did really poorly. So okay. critically, it did not do good. Um, and so this is a very diverse cast, which obviously puts off a lot of people who like to be loud. Um, I'm not saying this is a perfect movie at all. It definitely has its strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to say it's the best movie I've ever seen. By any means. I had a blast. I really enjoyed it. And I will say, I got infinitely more out of it the second time I watched it. So the first time I watched it, I was mostly thinking about the comic story beats and trying to see like what the plot was going to be. So I was very focused on the story, the plot, what was going on there. My second watch through, I was... I knew what the story was already, right? So I was looking very closely at the characters, the characterization, the interactions, how they structured them, how they developed them. And seeing it a second time, really getting to notice all those intricate uh, character moments made my experience so much better. Like, I really enjoyed it after the the first watch through, but the second time I was like, wow. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I agree with you a lot that it's a really larger than life movie, but it's also about the smaller moments, especially between the characters, between, um, you know, Camille Nagiani's character with sprites, um, those little scenes, uh, Drew was uh, with, um, uh, with Yara, I believe is the name, the speedster. Makari. Makari, my bad. Sorry. I'm, I, some of the names remind me of characters from other things that I love. And so I could like, oh, yeah, I, I sure. like Kari from uh, Avatar, the last airbender. Um, but, but yeah, I, I agree with you to me in this film fits to be dead center of the MCU of all the movies. 
So it either it goes either way in certain aspects where like it's not a Thor of the Dark World by any means where it's just kind of boring. This actually has some interesting insights and specifically the plot. And I agree with Sly what they said about what they think that the overall theme of the films are, what it's actually about. And I believe I'm going to be talking with you. Uh, we're going to do an extra credit MCU University video where we will talk about the movie. So that way we can actually give our thoughts out there um, in full detail for this so i will just i will say yeah. that makari druig and fastos are the dream team yeah. i love the three of them they're the best they're really great um but yeah i i'm definitely a little higher on the film than this i will say um i know okay so i know i'm very uh down on thor ragnarok i i I did not like it at all. It was not a favorite of mine. Uh, and I know that like, a lot of people do not agree with me. A lot of people think that's one of their favorite films. Um, one of my biggest problems with Thor Ragnarok, I feel Eternals did a hundred times better. And that was the balance of tone. I thought it was like, it felt serious and, you know, heavy and dark, but the co comedic elements balanced really well. And in Thor Ragnarok, I felt like I was watching two different movies, but Eternals, I think, blends those two elements really well and does that a lot better than what I've seen in previous movies. Under that lens, I can I can see where you can make that make that change for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, to me, this is the Justice League movie that I wish we got um, because it's very much centered <laughs> on their love of humanity and not so much the despair of humanity, which I constantly get with all the Zack Snyder films. Um, th that is the the thing that I, I loved. Um, this is my favorite interpretation of uh, speed in a film um, because the way that character moves and the way the camera follows with them looks incredible. And they use such a good, it's a, such a good use of a speedster. Um, of course, there's, there's very much archetypes of, the New Gods, because Jack Kirby worked on both uh, Eternals and New Gods. So they're very similar to DC characters. So there's definitely allegories. And even the movie kind of mentions that. And I won't say why. Um, but, you know, Icarus is, you know, moment. very much, you know, your standard guy, guys flying in the sky, right? Superman kind of guy. And then you have your speedster. You have your Wonder Woman character, which is clearly like Angelina Jolie. Like, there's definitely archetypes there. And this is why I think that, like, as a movie in general, I really wished it was the justice league movie that we got um the pacing wise i understand how people are think it's a little um disjointed because the movie is kind of like piecemeal in a lot of ways but i still think that they told just enough just enough to get you around through where you needed to feel and be at by the end of the film personally I, yeah i think that's where i differ from a lot of people is my takeaway from that movie was this is marvel like putting their toes in the water with playing around with the concept of non-linear storytelling and i love that i want to see more of that from them and i can see why that put off a lot of people where they it's it's not a lot non-linear story by any means but they play around with those elements and I think that put off a lot of people. But that was one of my favorite parts of, of the movie, actually. I, I I I do wonder one of the reasons why it's getting a little bit less praise than like most of the other ones is because it, it feels like it's more out of this world than, than it is, right? Because the turtles are beings that are from a different world, they're from a different place, and this is the MCU trying to kind of expand it even more yeah, out in aspects in a way in aspects with yes. characters that we have no idea like who these because mm -hmm. like when we when we did the thanos thing we knew who spider-man was we knew who star lord and like everybody was and we knew all these characters that were coming coming into those movies we this is yeah them trying to establish who nine of these characters are whatever how many of there are like there's six ten there's ten. Ten. Yeah. ten yeah okay okay there's ten characters yeah they're trying to establish in one movie and that is a tall task for any any kind of film. It doesn't matter what I mean, it is. It's, They're it's not one all... of the best ensemble yeah. films I've yeah. seen. I, the way, I won't say anything other than the way they introduce the characters, I really felt connected to them. And I, I cared about every single one of them. And I did yeah, not expect too. that going in. I was like, there's 10 of them. You know, some of them I won't care about. That's fine. It's an ensemble film introducing all new characters but i managed to care about every single one of them by the end of that film yeah on the first watch through 
Yeah, no, it's gonna be sure. tough for no. me to remember every name. Well, yeah. I don't. This is why I'm not. I'm not basing it on the names because I base it on their powers. Because you're right. I th- some of them are actually named after, and, and it's obviously a point. I still in the, can't remember Kit Harrington's character's name. Dwayne. I, John, I watched no. Dwayne. Is it, is it, is it Dwayne? Rock Johnson? Is it Dwayne? Is it Dwayne? Dwayne or do, Dwayne, yeah, Dwayne. Rock okay. Johnson? No, I Dwayne? watched it once. I couldn't remember his name, and then I watched it again, and the whole time I was no. like, I'm going to remember the, his name. I'm going to remember his re- name. And the, then by yeah. the time I got out, I was like, I don't remember his name. He has the <laughs> t- the real reason is because he has the shortest amount of screen time in a almost three-hour movie, so no. he tends to be on the why back. Does he get, why does he get so much trailer time? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to say why. Bring, that's how they bring <laughs> you in, bro. That's how they bring, <laughs> that's how they bring God. you in. Um, the post credit scenes are uh, are interesting. They're not the most bombastic things. However, there are introductions to new characters, and they're kind of cool. The, the, the yeah. last one, I lost my mind. So I've heard so many things about that thing, and I'm like, is that who I think it is? Ta-? Anyways, that's no, the coolest just, thing. I'm not no. saying shit. I'm not saying shit, but well, that's yeah. like it's that's how it goes. It you know? is who you're thinking. That's so right. Shang- that's I'm scared. I'm like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> so Shang Chi is coming out on Disney Plus in a this week. week. Yeah, yeah, right. Is this, is the same trajectory happening with Eternals? I assume Probably. so. Yeah, I assume so. Right. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I I'm not gonna go watch this in theater, so I'm gonna wait until this yeah, comes fine. out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll is- probably take I'll probably take a gander at at theaters. The only issue I have with a- Eternals is that. In the Marvel Universe, we've had OP characters like Captain Marvel has become mm-hmm. a little OP here. And then now we're introducing people who are s- some people in there who are like Superman level of OP here. Mm-hmm. And the problem with introducing characters like that so, is 100% of the time they will never live up to their true potential because with every writer that has to helm their their they will change how how skilled they are to how OP they are throughout throughout each film they're going to be in from here on out. And it just gets so tiresome to see Captain Marvel be like, oh, well, I'm going to take out like five guys and have a problem, but I can now take out Star Destroyers in another film. It's like, sure. Nobody really knows how to scale these characters as well be, as they should. To be fair. Um, well, no, they do it like in the first movie too. Don't yeah. They, they, yeah, they, the they, they, they need to, they need to figure out how to they really scale in, these yeah. characters. Cause now you're so going to have to introduce. Let me, no, yeah, absolutely. So let me go ahead yeah. and clarify the, the start of this movie. They're a unit. The movie then is all about how they have to come together. They yeah. do a really solid job of how, when they're together, they are a, a collective that is kind of unstoppable. However, because of the events of the movie, you see how very vulnerable just one is. They're not in perver- perverse to, d- to damage, you know, like yeah. they but will fucking die if they don't do it. And they're, not all their powers are comparable to other characters in the in the roster. So if they're yeah. left alone to their own devices, they're fucked and they do a yeah. really good job. There's a character. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a fight scene with the one thing they do does not stop fighting things. <laughs> and yeah. it's very clear when that happens. It's- yeah, but so it, it's I'll not necessarily they, in a sense of the like way they balanced the team is really interesting because five of them are like the brains and five of them are the fighters. Yes. So when yeah. they come together, they're super powerful. But if you have just somebody who uses yes. their brain, like you're not going to get very far. Yeah. My thing on it is, of course, they're going to be kind of balanced in their own film because they're sectioned off in their own film. But in future films, because they're eventually going to have to show up in some capacity in the Marvel Universe, yeah. there's no way they're going to they're going to one and done these characters. It's who helms them next. Are they going to be able to scale them as well as they are in well, their own films? Yeah. And very bad job at doing that. It's OK. They, I, they honestly don't yeah, know how to scale I, their characters very I, well. They, it's the same, the same thing. Hap- like when you have a story a beginning for like superheroes, it's. Oh, easy to like you know nerf them right but once mm-hmm. they get to the end of the film they're like you know they're they, they trope they got their true potential in a way but the mm-hmm. thing the thing that i think what works in this and that goes with the story tropes of what they've been before i mean these are like okay here's an example and i'm not it's very comparable to this film the power rangers the power rangers as a collective are fucking almost unstoppable for the most part when they come together and they go in the mega sword and they do their shit they know they team up right when they're individual, though, they can be corrupted. They can be absolutely taken out individually. That's how this movie works in the same way where, like, they're not all Supermans. All right. 
Some of them are as long as, Hawkeyes. As long as, they, as long as they like like keep that trajectory, I think that yeah. Yeah. as then, long as the next writers yeah. who keep the keep like know how to scale them, it's going to be perfectly fine. I do believe like, like Captain um, Marvel hit a level where she, she is just like it's she scaled she so go quick. anywhere she could go anywhere in the universe. She, scaled, <laughs> like, she was like down <laughs> here fair, one second and then she just scaled. Like they just said, "Fuck it, we're just going to give her Superman powers." And the <laughs> only way Superman to nerf her is like she's on a different world. That's yeah. how you nerf her. <laughs> that's how you nerf her. She's just too busy doing something else. <laughs> no, that's fair. And I'm very curious of how that's going to work in that ensemble yeah. and how big. God, my dad. Hold on. Let me answer this phone call. When, real yeah, quick. Well, I have one more thing to say here hold about, on, about hold Eternals. On, real quick. Hey, dad. Uh, at least, hey, dad. Yeah. Hey, I'm on. I'm doing a show again. You call me every week on the same time when I'm doing a show. Do you, say everybody. Okay. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> Hey, hello, everyone. I'm sorry. Hello. <laughs> it's okay. They said hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you after the show, okay? All right. All right. Bye. I have one more thing to say about Eternals. Or I just this is the general Marvel Universe because it's canon in my head. Sure. I know I joke about head people with their head cannons a lot, but uh, this is my head cannon for the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Uh, this is in this universe. Gilfoyle is obviously not a Satanist. This is the this is the alternate universe where Gilfoyle is decided to become a Christian. Yeah, he's a variant. He decided to become a Christian and he became a teacher. He became a teacher. In, uh, he was in, universe. in. He was in Incredible Hulk. He was uh, yeah. he was yeah. doing college in Incredible Hulk. Gilfoyle is not a Satanist in this universe, so he obviously became a teacher. And Dinesh is the actual cool cousin. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's the cool cousin. I, I, I was like, I was like, I quit. Quit. Sorry. Sorry. where are you going I... with this? And then I remembered a song called Valley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation happened. It's good. It's good. It's a, how the tables? How the tables have turned happen. between the two? I will say, uh, Foyle becomes teacher. He has and the. the <laughs> and the he, biggest beta of Silicon Valley is so fucking ripped now. <laughs> no, he's ripped, but I will say he is probably the least. He's my least favorite Eternal out of them. Which oh no, was, was not my f- I was looking forward to him the most. He's fantastic. <laughs> no, he's fantastic. At what he does and his he has scenes that are great. His powers are not my favorite. <laughs> That's the only oh, thing. Good. That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, Kuga, Kumail, uh, K- uh, Kumail Nanjiani, um, oh. Kugo. I Kingo. Kingo. If Kingo. anybody hasn't figured this out about I really me, like I, I don't remember I like him too, actors' names. I refer to them as their characters. So no, that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I can't tell you all the character names. Some of these are new. However, I will say Gilgamesh, my favorite character. He's also from uh, Train to Busan, and he's fucking amazing. And I can't wait for more movies with this man in general. I just want to see this. Man anybody named movies. Gilgamesh deserves a cool power. So honestly, bad. he's so fucking. He looks like me, but thicker and okay, like, cute. Who the fuck is messing with the doc? I'm not. Hey, I'm not even looking at the doc. Oh, sorry, that's hey, me. Man. I'm just. I'm just clicking. Sorry, that's me. That's me. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> me. sorry, he keeps splashing. Uh, yeah, that's all like, right, can I talk about the rest yes, of the things? Yes, go for it. This go for it. Go for it. <laughs> all right. So I saw Eternals. That was great. Lovely. Again, check out my Twitter <laughs> thread. Um, I also made a TikTok about it. If you want to see more thoughts. Uh for video games i've been continuing with voice of cards still liking it um i got to like the third area i guess i don't know it's fun it's it's a card game i'm vibing it's very pretty that's you know cool, I heard cool they cool. added near cards i really want to play <laughs> <laughs> and then a game i have been looking forward to for like over a year came out this week and that is unpacking. And I fell in love with this game at the PAX Online demo last year that replaced PAX West. And I just like downloaded the demo and went through and I played that demo like three or four times. I was so excited about it. It came out this week. I'm having such a blast. It's such a beautiful, just like relaxing, sorting things total de-stressor really pretty really cute such a I, cool idea I'm, I saw I'm in love with Kate this play game. this uh, I saw her Kate play this and then I was just like man this game looks very relaxing and very like like very OCD friendly as well because it seems like it puts places and I saw this one video I think maybe it was Mario that retweeted or somebody retweeted it where they um yeah where he put it in different places and the different sounds that every place makes with the with the item that you put down, it's insane. They like got the sounds for everything. Of, mm. The the amount of different sounds 
I saw like a tweet about somebody talking about how many individual Foley tracks are in this game. It's insane. I obviously don't know what they sound like, but people have said they're cool, and that's awesome. Good for you all. I'm glad you have that. Uh, but yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, and then <sighs> I started rewatching 911. Uh, I know we talked about this when Fee started watching it, but. The other day, I was like, I really just want to watch uh, season 3, episode 15, and season 4, episode 14. If you see the show, you know exactly what incidences I'm re- referring to. And Your favorite crimes? I, I was... <sighs> What's your favorite crime? <laughs> They're both... Um, uh, uh, one character is put in, in peril in each season in in those episodes and that's all I was gonna watch and my friend Shelby talked me out of it and she's like you need you need the build up and the they're okay moments so I just started from the beginning of season one again and 911 is a good show y'all I keep um, <laughs> every time one of the characters does something dumb I just keep going Evan. <laughs> and that's the whole first season for me. <laughs> so I've, I'm currently on the first season. I can't wait for season two because um, my favorite character gets introduced then. Uh, but yeah, I'm rewatching 911. I need people to talk about this show with. So if you've seen 911, hit me up. I, I, I love the show. I need to yell about it with people. So yeah, what, yeah. So, what, so what is your favorite crime, though? <laughs> Mine's bank robbery. I think bank robberies, like you know, they're pretty fun up there. Yeah, I've um, been watching a lot of you, some murder, maybe I don't know, <laughs> putting All people in boxes. Heights. Yeah, putting people in fucking cages. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think mine would be art robbery because just leverage makes it so fun. <laughs> So, so Mario, for for you, there, there, the dude, he keeps bringing like, like, so in the first season, in the basement <laughs> of his of his uh, li- li- like his uh, bookstore, he has like a cage, like it's a, it's all plexiglass, and it's, they keep all uh, all the books in it because it's, it's like room temperature. Uh, yeah, it's a, it. it's a safe huh. room for old books yeah. to keep them preserved. But Got he it. puts people in there that have Just either like caught him doing something. Where he puts them in there, or he puts like the dead body, like some sort of dead body in there. Makes sense. And every season, that 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 fucking cage is there in a different place. Gotcha. Mm. He makes he it in different it. places. Yeah, he rebuilds it in yeah. different places. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Speaking yeah. of uh, dead bodies, uh, transitioning over to what I've been up to and watching. <laughs> That's a transition. Uh, That's a transition. That, that was a transition. I, I've been playing also unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dead, bodies? dead bodies what? there's dead bodies uh, do you unpacking. unpack dead bodies like in in packing i thought this game was supposed to be not stressful uh you know sometimes it can be <laughs> depending yeah. on how you feel how you feel afterwards um when you can't foot down the one item which clearly should be there and it doesn't let you do it like why can't i hide my game boy on my bed that's stupid um because i do why it can't i hide this dead body in the freezer? exactly like yeah. why won't you let me open the fridge i have it's a ridiculous. deep freezer for a reason what, yeah. what did walter white mean by getting not, not putting that body in the bathtub my you know? my real question about unpacking is like man this person moves around a lot but then again i understand it's part of the story and i understand why they are moving constantly as someone who hasn't moved as much uh definitely sees like you know he's i think they went through their dorm and then they move on to their next dorm I don't know. Anyways, uh, so you I put, have to change dorms every year. So, like, oh man, that's 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 bogus. Um, Buffy was in the, her dorm for four years before she quit school. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I've been playing unpacking as well. Unpacking actually is uh, very therapeutic. It actually makes me want to redo this uh, monstrosity behind me. Uh, so I will be redoing this entire shelf to make <laughs> it more presentable because it looks like it's falling apart. And uh, definitely, you know, maybe add some lights back there. Who knows? That'd be kind of cool. Um, so unpacking is fun because you can play it on Game Pass, and uh, I've been enjoying that. Just enjoying the vibes. Just the music is uh, a lot of fun to just put on and just walk away, and you just hear that in your life. So totally into that. Um, the two th- major things, and, and I'll get to the dead bodies at the end because I think that's probably going to be the thing I talk about the most. Um, one of the- also yell at Fee to put dead bodies in the thumbnail. Yeah, hide dead oh, bodies gosh. into the thumbnail, please. Uh, just dead so. butts. <laughs> dead butts. Dead butts. Dead body butts. <laughs> 
We're going to get canceled. Uh, already can- we've already been canceled. <laughs> I've been reading comics, and I read finally. What? Comics? Yes. I bought this book uh, a couple months ago uh, just purely from a TikTok. They sorely, totally convinced me to get it, and honestly, they were not wrong. It's very great. Um, it is, of course, Spider-Man. Uh, I leave this thing. It's called A Life Story. And the way that it goes, it's in its own pocket universe where it takes place in the 60s, starting at around 66, uh, right around the time of the Vietnam War, and carries on all the way to about 2019 um, as if like time was in real time. Mm -hmm. And so Spider-Man is dealing with, obviously, all his rogue rogue, uh, galleries of the time in which they are presented in comics, but as if he is continuously aging over that period of time, leading all the way up to Superior Spider-Man. But it's not the way that we all remember them. There are some slight variations. So, for instance, uh, you know, one of the big moments in Civil War, obviously in the comics, is he reveals himself. That is told, told that version of story is told, but told differently. And it's really compelling and how it connects to how the 90s happened. So uh, it's... Very, it's beautifully drawn. It's drawn by uh, Mark Bagley, who did the original run of the Ultimate Spider-Man, the Peter Parker era with Brian Michael Bendis. So it starts from the '60s, leading and all the way. And it's a wonderful continuation of art from those periods. Um, it starts, man. How can I describe it? Um, there's some characters in here that evolve differently and turn into other things uh, because of the way that they project with time. Uh, which I find very fascinating. Uh, just this idea of an aging superhero and how he has to deal with it uh, on a yearly on a yearly basis, as well as things going on in the real world. Like, should he enlist into the army? Is he going to be drafted? Well, at this time, he's in college. You know, like all these things are constantly going in his mind. Like Flash Thompson at this moment is going to war, and he's you know he f- he feels guilt about like should I tell him not to go and stuff like that, and how that plays out with the rest of the story. Um, Really fun, wonderful storytelling in terms of how this thing is conceded as well as it how it, it honors all those things that came before it and telling this really great story of a full life of Spider-Man. Um, and I hope they do more in this universe, specifically following possibly other characters that are in there that are introduced. Um, you know, because Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man's story, but there's other people that make appearances. So I think it'd be cool to have their journey through this time period. Specifically, I think Captain America is probably the most interesting side character in the story um, that I would love to hear about his sort of reemergence into the world from, it's you know, going from one army, one war to another. And so... That I find fascinating and how the duality of where he allegiance between that. So definitely recommend uh, Spider-Man, a life story. It's like 20 bucks. Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, Chip Sadarsky is the writer um, who's been doing a lot of books over there at Marvel. But yeah, it's uh, it's a complete story. And I think it's definitely worth watching uh, reading. Sorry. And Sly, if it's on Marvel Universe, definitely check it out. 100%. Yeah, for sure. Um, and to finally address the dead bodies, I of course have, <laughs> I, uh, so I'm at an impasse we where dead body count. How many times have we said quite dead a few dead bodies? Dead body. This is not even a Halloween body. episode, not even a Halloween episode. Uh, I, uh, you know, am coming to the end of sort of, uh, uh, having a uh, income in a certain way. And so I need to start making budget cuts. And sadly, one of the budget cuts that I have to make is not being able to go to movies like as often as I did um, mm-hmm. with the power of, uh, you know, AMC, my homie, my homie, you don't have to worry about that. Once I get paid, cause we both eaten once I'm, once I'm in the cheddar again. All right. Well, that sounds There's on Marvel unlimited. Hell yeah. There you go. Boom. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So definitely- go read that book. But uh, once, 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 uh, once my paychecks start coming in, we're going to go see movies still. <laughs> I'm not gonna you're not gonna not go see movies, mother All right. Well, <laughs> this was my my like I'm gonna go watch I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bang bang. I'm gonna watch uh Eternals. We'll go see we, we gotta go see Dune, Eternals, and Last <laughs> So many. <laughs> so many movies. This is like three hours a piece. Um and then of oh, course yeah. I watched forget, uh, forget the money, you worth the time. <laughs> right. Shit. Hey, if you give us your yeah. uh subscriptions and, and Twitch Prime, then yeah, maybe I can go see movies. Um yeah. talk about them on the show. Uh, 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 subscribe to our Patron. Pat- yes, our Patron. <laughs> I watched Edgar Wright's latest film last uh, last night in Soho, 
And I, as a massive Edgar Wright fan from discovering Shaun of the Dead, which felt like years before that actually was like majorly popular, which was really cool. Um, to then seeing his other films such as Hot Fuzz, uh, End of the World, and of course, Scott Pilgrim, Baby Driver, and uh, his documentary that he did with the Smart Brothers. This is his latest. He's back to horror. Um, this is a Jallo film. So essentially, very much in the vein of uh, a woman uh, traveling in the world of night. Uh, there's uh, very scary people. There's black gloves. There's a color palette that is very similar to like those of Suspiria or all those Italian films. And uh, it is a story about a woman who is from the countryside, gets to go to London to be a fashion designer, and immediately is uh, in a panic uh, over the fact that she uh, is somewhere where she is not used to. Um, and very much tries to lose herself in her own nostalgia by recollecting of what London used to be and the sort of the 60s and how uh, glitz and glamour and star, star and, and, and stuff like that. And she all of a sudden starts having these dreams where she's actually at the 60s and she uh, starts living this life of this other person and things go awry from there. And it is a wonderfully, beautifully shot movie, as all Edgar Wright movies are. So if you want something like my th my wallpaper right now is you can't see because it, it has notifications, but I have like the shot of her with like the most blacked out eyes ever, like looking absolutely terrified because it's gorgeous. I just love the way that it's composed. And uh, he, this movie hits on all fronts. And, and for, for the most part, the ending, I will say, is probably the part that I'm not the most clear about or the message of the ending, but I still think that this is a movie worth seeing. Um, if you are an Edgar Wright fan in terms of just cinematography, the way his dialogue hits, um, of course the music choices, if you're a huge fan of baby driver, Oh boy, you got some sixties, uh, love in here as well. As some 80 synth wave, which is really, really spectacular. And you love yourself some Halloween dance parties. Hey, there's one in here too. So Monster definitely, mesh. definitely, definitely, uh, recommend, uh, last night in Soho, which is a very very fun movie so as long as that movie does what baby driver did where like it real the music really propels the scenes forward then i'd probably be into it it's not the same like because obviously his was different where he was using that as like a barometer to yeah. like like he was using it as like to time things like it's not like very much no. like that but i do think that the music fits for what the vision that he's going for, this nostalgic feeling of the 60s mixed in with what is portrayed on the film. So definitely... Rec